On the move, changing perceptions, pushing limits. Today's Africa is not framed by the past. A new generation is stepping up, embracing tradition while blazing a new path, giving voice to unique style, connected in ways others before were not. This is where the urban pulse meets creativity and a new culture thrives. This is African Voices. And this week, style stars. I'm measuring him for a blazer. Meet the designers, trendsetters, and hairstylists cultivating a new look across Africa. We start in Rwanda, where one tailor is turning traditional suits into cultural statements. I'm constantly challenged doing this job. It keeps things exciting, but it's also quite stressful. <laughs> the bow tie for me, you know, there's dignity, class, prestige, and it was a complete antithesis to the perception many people had of Africa. My name is Matthew Ogamba, and this is my Africa. Oh, yes, it's real <laughs> Unconventional and uninhibited, Matthew Rugamba is a designer based in Rwanda's capital city, Kigali. I'm the founder of House of Tayo. Welcome to my store. The idea for his label was conceived in 2011 with the launch of a line of bow ties. This has been a pretty popular tie. It's a trick on how to see. Oh, wow. I was actually born in England, London. I lived there for six years. Then I moved to Uganda, then I went to Kenya for the first part of high school. So that was that point where I started expressing myself and I started to see that it's good to sometimes get out of my comfort zone and really engage and, and that's where I started to really grow because I made mistakes, you know, sometimes in front of many people. Inspired by traditional tailoring techniques, Rugamba has designs on creating a lifestyle brand which will showcase Africa's heritage and style. Right now, I'm measuring him for a blazer. What I love about it is the is the centric designs on the side, because it's a base, it's a shirt for the most part, and then there's always that fine detail that stands out from everything else. Once I've taken the measurements, we start making the suit or blazer. From that, we will do a couple of fittings before the piece is actually finished. This is like Sunzu and everything, so these are brand new. Are these different sizes? Yeah, yeah, we do. Despite his globe-trotting lifestyle as a youngster, Rugamba is proud of his homeland. I got a scholarship to go to university in the States. I was at Lewis and Clark College in Portland, Oregon. Portland is a very free-spirited city. Like, for example, if I decided I wanted to go to town dressed like a crazy man, you know, you might find someone actually matching in Portland. You know, Portland is one of those cities. But it was also that time when I would get questions about, you know, where I'm from. And, you know, the moment you say Rwanda, people only know one thing. You could see the pity in their face. And I was, uh, it used to irritate me because I was like, have you seen our country now? Have you seen the things that have changed? Do you see what's going on? It's amazing. It's incredible. So it, it frustrated me that people only saw one side. So I couldn't let you come all the way here and not show you how to tie a bow tie, making sure that one side of the bow tie is longer than the other. Then you put the long side over the shorter one, and then you bring the longer one back through the middle, close to your neck. Make sure it's nice and snug. The way I do it, I fold the shorter side and then wrap the longer side around it and then you can already see the bow starting to form. And then I grab the longer part. This, this is a bit tricky. And then I have to push it in between the loop at the front. And then when I pull it all the way through, we're pretty much there. Once you feel your bow tie is perfect, then you can pull your collar back down. And there you go. So I have a couple of errands to run in town today. Come with me. It's, it's difficult to just pinpoint a characteristic of Kigali. You know, one of the most vibrant places in the city is Nyamirambo, and everything from the barbershop signs to the, to the restaurants, you hear music there all times of, of the day. It is, the, you know, like the heartbeat of the city. 
<laughs> when I get some time, I, you know, I go search throughout the city. You know, you never know what you might find. So I go through all the markets, even sometimes on the side of the road, I, I find amazing prints. So Kitenge, all of the African wax print has uh, an amazing history. It was originally based off batiks in uh, Indonesia and Dutch traders went picked it up from Indonesia. They weren't able to sell them in Europe. So when they traveled to West Africa, they met you know, kings and chiefs who just fell in love with the prints. So they started to produce primarily for, for Africa. It's what people use to express themselves, which is really cool. <laughs> We're right here in the heart of uh, Kigali, all the main Kitenge shops and prints. Uh, you can just, so much going on, it's always busy. When I look for prints, it's, it's mostly about personal taste. Different prints work better with different products. So it's just, I just come in to the market to come and to try and get different ideas and see as many prints as I can. I'm a fan of House of Kai. Likewise, and it's great to be here with Justin as well. Yeah. That's, this is a vote of confidence I get my prints in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> Away from work, Rugamba is a keen runner. He says exercising helps to keep him focused. Running helps me push my, my physical boundaries and, and it, it makes me believe I can do more. And I, I apply that to my personal life and my work. And every day I get into the office, I think, how much more can I do? Can I push the boundaries of what I did yesterday? A little bit of a bang club. <laughs> <laughs> While keeping fit is good for the mind, looking sharp is also very much part of the Rugamba brand. So I'm here for one of my most important meetings of the week, my haircut. Hey Frankie, how are you? Hey Mike, how are you? Fine, thank you. You good? I'm good, thank you. I, start, I started doing the side pop sometime when I was in college. I started reading more about the liberation movement in Africa that happened around the 60s. Just one of the personalities I was drawn to was Patrice Lumumba. I mean, I knew about him, I'd read about him in school, but it was that first time that, that what he was talking about resonated uh, with me personally. And I just loved the style and fashion of that, that period in Africa. It was a complex period where you have countries breaking away from uh, colonialism and then starting to embrace their heritage and like, and African identity once again. And I felt I was in that similar place when I started House of Tayo. Rugamba has come a long way in a short space of time, but has no plans to slow down anytime soon. One thing that I've realized is it's a responsibility for myself and for the other designers in Rwanda to, to create spaces for the youth to experiment, to grow, and not say it's absurd, and also to inspire them. Once you are about eight, all hairdressers will say, oh, you have to relax your hair. She will be beautiful, she will be more simple. We are used to this. Now, things are changing. We are, I think the natural movement came here and had an impact of how women see themselves. 